the world's first white samurai, John Blackthorne, aka William Adams. That is the man Shogun's main character is based on, and his journey is unlike any other. Starting with his shipwreck upon Japan, this fateful day changed the course of history forever. Originally, William and his crew set sail for South America upon their ship, the Liefde. Thus, a fleet of five ships left Holland on the journey through the Straits of Magellan. The original mission was to sell their cargo for silver and head for Japan only if the first mission failed to South America. In that case, they were to obtain silver in Japan to buy spices in the Malukas, eventually heading back to Europe. Many sailors were scared because of the harsh weather conditions. One vessel returned home early, one was captured by the Spanish and another by the Portuguese. Severe storms seized one more until only William Adams and his crew remained. With the threat of the Spanish, Portuguese and South American locals getting troublesome and severe illness spreading across the crew, the mission was abandoned with the crew opting for Plan B, the land of the rising sun, Japan. The 19-month journey was a difficult one, but William's lifter made it. The word lifter in Dutch meant love, which is quite poetic considering what William Adams was about to offer to this country. This ship once had a different name though, the Erasmus, which is the name given to John Blackthorns in Shogun. Nonetheless, the 23 remaining crew members were sick, injured, starving, depressed, and everything in between, barely managing to live another day. By the time they reached land in Kyushu, only William and eight others remained. Upon their arrival, they were met by the locals, as well as Portuguese. They'd been in Japan for many years, and had established their trading base in Nagasaki, making an absolute killing as middlemen in the silk trade between China and Japan. But alongside them was the Society of Jesus, aka Jesuits, who followed the Portuguese traders around, turning Japan into a Catholic country. And with many of the English, such as William Adams, being highly anti-Catholic, they were automatic enemies from the start. And so the Jesuits flagged William and his crew as pirates and demanded their execution. For a bit of context, Adams, just like his counterpart, John Blackthorne, landed in Japan in April 1600. However, Christian missionaries had already arrived in the 1540s with over 100,000 converts including many daimyos in Kyushu, just as we witnessed in the Shogun TV show. Their success was met with resistance from Emperor Ogimachi, where he issued a ban to Catholicism in 1655 and 68, having little to no effect. With tension rising almost 20 years later, Imperial Regent Toyotomi Hideyoshi created a ban on Jesuit missionaries, which led to Christianity being repressed as a threat to national unity. William himself in letters spoke about how the locals were no problem and treated them with no hostility, yet their ship was seized nonetheless with practically everything on board taken away. From there they were taken to Osaka Castle and imprisoned by Tokugawa Iesu, the lord of this land aka Toronaga in the TV show. The events played out similarly, with William's cannons and weapons being confiscated, however a major difference revealed by John Blackthorne's actor Cosmo Jarvis between TV show and book is the amount of time he spent imprisoned and the effects that it had. The sheer misery of the conditions he experienced as a prisoner of war had a profound effect on Blackthorn and how he related to Father Domingo, as a lot of knowledge regarding Japan is passed on to him in the few years he spent here. In fact, the author of Shogun's book, James Clavell, based this on his own experiences. He was captured in Java in 1942 and sent to a Japanese prisoner of war camp, later claiming prison was like a university of sorts with the people you meet there. And so just for that tad bit of balls deep information, make sure you leave a like on the video. Anyway, William Adams' luck would soon change after multiple meetings with the daimyo Tokugawa, who took great interest in the Anji, the Japanese name he was referred to as meaning pilot. Much like Toranaga, he was unlike any other daimyo of his era. He was open-minded with learning and understanding cultures outside their own. He believed it was key in giving them the edge in future battles. And that, he was right. Their relationship played out similarly, with William writing to his wife back in England about how he stayed with the Lord until midnight, discussing his religious beliefs, maps of the world, his war with Spaniards and Portuguese, amongst other things. Now you may ask yourself how an Englishman and Japanese would even communicate, but that was thanks to William knowing Portuguese like many others in Japan at the time. This meant that with the help of translators, he could communicate properly. In fact, did you know that when Blackthorn talks to his crew in the TV show, he's actually talking Dutch, and when talking to Miriko, he 
he's talking Portuguese, not English. He knew three languages at this point and later would learn a fourth. However, William Adams' relationship with his translator was not quite the same as it appears in the TV show, despite Mariko also being based on a real-life person named Hosokawa, Gracia. Because as far as I'm aware, he definitely did not go to pound town on her. Police! Police! But because William had not caused any direct damage to Tokugawa's land or people, he refused the Portuguese wishes to have him killed. Rather, he trusted William to fulfill a very important job. You see, William Adams was born and raised in Gillingham, Kent, England. After his father passed away when he was 12, William was made an apprentice to Master Nicholas Diggins, the proprietor of Limehouse Shipyard, in preparation for a life at sea. During this time, before joining the Royal Navy, he studied shipbuilding, astronomy, and navigation. He went on to serve under Sir Francis Drake while England and Spain were at war, and in 1588, he served as the master of a resupply ship that sent food and ammunition to the English fleet, where he witnessed naval action against the Spanish Armada. The following year, he married and went on to have two kids before becoming a pilot for the Barbary Company, and then aged 34, became pilot major of the five-ship fleet. Because of his incredibly vast knowledge and experience traversing the ocean and fighting at sea, William Adams was commissioned to build the first ever Western-style battleship in Japan by Tokugawa, and so a trade offer was made. William build ship, William get crew back. Tokugawa accepted, and so William's crew was all ordered from Bungo to Edo upon the lifter, where she sank. How are you? I am under the water. Nonetheless, the survivors, as well as William himself, had now become prestige guests of the daimyo, allowed to visit and stay at his place whenever they wished to. Eventually, an 80-ton vessel was built, soon followed the next year by a 120-ton one. When Tokugawa set foot upon this vessel, William explained that the daimyo's lit-up face gave him great happiness. But a big change from the book, early versions of the TV show, and real life was that Blackthorn's job in Aijiro was to teach Yabushigi's army how to use muskets. This was changed because it did not match up with history. Guns were first brought to Japan in the 1540, 50 years before Blackthorn arrived. Therefore, he had nothing new to teach them. Furthermore, the Portuguese had already brought cannons to Japan, though they were much smaller. And so, the Shogun TV show made Johns much bigger and stronger on the ship, as cannons changed the course of the 1615 siege of Osaka. After all, the English and the Dutch gave them those cannons, which made it historically accurate. Now, those of William's crew who wished to leave Japan were allowed to, but William, or should I say John Blackthorne's journey, wasn't over. It had only just begun. The cannons taken from William's lifter eventually gave Tokugawa the edge in the Battle of Sekigahara on October 21st, 1600. This was both the largest and most important battle in Japanese feudal history, a battle that eventually led to Tokugawa claiming the title of Shogun. However, despite William's crew gone and family waiting back in England, the now Shogun Tokugawa had no intention of letting William leave the country. The Englishman had since learned Japanese, making him the world's first Weep, and also the shogun's official interpreter, replacing the Portuguese Jesuits. Sensational. That wasn't all. William was given two swords. According to Tokugawa, that was the moment William Adams died. The man who took his place would forever be known as Miura Anji, the first white samurai was born. From here, William's life would never be the same. When Tokugawa said William Adams was dead, he meant it. He declared his wife, Mary, back in England a widow, freeing William to serve the Shogun forever. In spite of this, William made sure he would send his former family money on a monthly basis. He wasn't finished claiming new names though, as it was here William was finally pronounced as Hatamoto, unlike in the TV show where by episode 3, John was already given this title. This was the highest rank a samurai could achieve. Those made Hatamoto are expected to only die to protect their lord's interests. But it did come with its benefits, as William was granted an estate of land in Hemi, along with 80 or 90 farmers to work under him. This was valued at 250 koku, a measurement of yearly income where a singular koku would signify the quantity of rice needed to feed one person for a full year. Basically, he was rich as hell at this point. And so, as he himself wrote in a letter, 
letter, God hath provided for me after my great misery, alluding to how he was finally rewarded for his disaster ridden journey that saw him wind up in Japan to begin with. However, with his new life as Miura Anjin also came a new family. He married Ayuki and had two more children with her. What's interesting is that Ayuki was of no noble status, despite the Shogun podcast labeling her as part of a samurai family, suggesting Tokugawa organized their marriage. Based on history, for Blackthorn to become a Hatomoto, he had to be part of a samurai family. So when he marries Fuji, he's adopted into her family according to the writers of the TV show. However, in reality, it seems that William married out of love rather than social hierarchy. In spite of this, it's rumored he also had a third child with a Japanese woman from Hirado, an area of Japan he spent time at later in his life, establishing an English trade factory. His time spent in Japan had converted him entirely. Even when he was eventually given the option to go back to England, he refused. Where he was once desperate to leave and return to what he loved, he instead learned to love what he was given. He wrote about how the people of Japan were of good nature, courteous above measure, and valiant in war. Unlike his John Blackthorn counterpart, William Adams showed admiration for the strictness of Japanese law, stating, their justice is severely executed without any partiality upon transgressors of the law. They are governed in great civility, I mean not a land better governed in the world by civil policy. William still had much to do, however, starting with the replacement of the Portuguese monopoly they had built across Japan. On behalf of the Dutch East India Company, Adams negotiated the first trading factory in Japan in 1609. The Shogun preferred the Dutch over the Portuguese as they didn't mix their religion with trade, thus didn't try to convert the country of Japan into Catholics. Thus, by 1614, all Portuguese Jesuits were kicked out of the country. A decision made with the help of William Adams, who had finally achieved his goal of ending the Portuguese rule of his home. By 1633, Tokugawa eventually closed Japan's borders to stop further outside religions from taking over their country. Following the death of William Adams 13 years earlier, in 1620, the same year that his old wife Mary died. He split his will between his Japanese and English family, with Joseph, a son from his Japanese wife, taking on his father's role. In the end, had it not been for William Adams ending up in Japan merely because of a plan B option and the pure luck of surviving the journey, the Japan we know today would have been incredibly different. Now, to enjoy more peak fiction, click this video on your screen right now to learn all about the truth behind Dune's Sandworm.